to another TNT. That's right, Thursday Night Treasures. We're back. Uh, Dr. Christy and I, but Hi. you can't see her yet, so give me just a second here. Hey! Boom! There she is. Right, we got a right TNT screen now. Uh, Quinch Press says, Enablers. Hey, it's good to see everybody out there. Who we got here? We got, we got Bex. We got Tomcat slash Sean. We got uh, Dr. Christy, of course. Quinch Press, Whitney. So good to see everybody. <laughs> Looks like the hydrates are already rolling in. She's Louise. Bex and Quinch Press have both given us hydrates already. So cheers to you guys. I guess we're starting the evening off strong. Mm. Lovely. So nice there's, and spicy. There's for Bex. We'll get to yours in just a second. Quinch Press. Okay, Quinch, calm down. <laughs> He's trying. He wants us to catch up with him. I'm going to do the posture check. Ugh, I need that. Oof. So tonight we are going to talk about our adventures in the island of Majorca, Spain. Woo Ooh, so much fun. And I'm gonna draw a little uh, lighthouse, so that'll be fun. Um it's because we couldn't hydrate on the YouTube video last <laughs> week. Yeah, no doubt. We hey, how up. great was Christy on that YouTube thing, right? Oh, I go mean on. some of those people's their cameras were a little dark, their audio was like Hello, I'm talking to you from 1998. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm glad that that's what's important, not what we had to say. You had lots of good things to say, but we could actually hear it when you said it because you had lights and a microphone instead of like... I made Brian like set the lights up like, you know, look took like 10 minutes. I'm like, mm -mm, I got to look good on this. Come on now. It was fun. The um, When he said it was fun, it was fun. The, those girls are you know, powers in the industry, all those women. So yeah. it was super cool being on there with them. What an amazing group of creators, right? We've known um, Amanda and Fran and Deb forever and uh, um, Bea as well, but only kind of distantly do we know her. But we've kn I've known them, we've known them forever and we always have cocktails at San Diego Comic-Con and oh, usually yeah. here at Phoenix Comic-Con <laughs> with all those and all the women sit around and, you know, discuss uh, the what, industry. Discuss how they keep all of us boys in line? Yes, that's exactly it. Commiserate? No, that's not the right word. I know how this shit goes. Mm. Uh, the right. cadet performed admirably. Thanks, Quinch Press. Alright, I did Bex. I did Quinch's. Oh, Quinch has the second one, so here's Quinch number two. Thank you. Mm. I switched out my map. Mm. Hold on. Mm. So speaking of drinking, we are having a lovely Tesoro de Bolas today. De Bolas. I say everything with an Arabic accent, sorry. But this is a nice Spanish wine, since we are talking about Spain, that Brian dripped all over the place, and now I'm sticky. It um, happens. <laughs> Tomcat says, I have the power to hydrate, but I don't know how to do it. <laughs> Somebody help Tomcat, <laughs> a.k.a. So Lord Sean. At the bottom of the chat, you've got a little purple button that says Ink Drops. When you click the little purple, it looks like a little circle. Then you can see all the different things you can redeem your ink drops for. One of them is Baby Dyke Cookbrick for Christy. Learn Arabic with Christy. Christy Hydrate. Might be one or two other ones there. All right. So, anyway. We are going to talk about Mallorca today, which is in the Balarac Islands, which is off the coast of Spain on the... Um, España. España on the eastern side of Spain, north of Africa. Um, Mallorca is the largest of, there's like three little islands right there, and Mallorca is the biggest one, and Palma is the capital of Mallorca. Um, Brian and I have been to Madrid, but like briefly, but let me tell you how awesome this place is. Oh yeah. Whitney says, like, I'm enjoying a 2011 vintage de shoot brewery abyss. Ooh, that, Ooh, nice. that does sound good. Hey, Catherine, good to see you too. Martini Katie. <laughs> nice. I just, I could have had martinis. I forgot I bought um, blood orange That's right. martinis. I forgot about that. We're having anyway. Spanish wine. That's so. right. Spanish and Spain. It made sense. Um, anyway, so uh, the whole reason we went to Mallorca is, um, uh, this is going to be surprising, it was all about me. Um, can you see my shirt? Oh, hey. Thanks for the subscription, Tracy. Oh, wow. 
We're going to give three you three month a, streak. Impressive. That's right. That means you got a new hat. You got the bowler hat now. Oh, and you're going to look good yeah. in it. And everybody gets a little uh, new emote because of your subscription. Oh, cute. All right, now let's go back, back to my shirt. Can you see my shirt? You have to go a little taller. You there you go. Shirt. There you go. I went to my orchid to train at the Rafael Nadal Tennis Academy. He is from Manicor, which is um, one of the larger cities on Mallorca. Anybody that knows tennis knows that. But he has his own academy there, and it was awesome. It was like the best thing ever. And we I, were there with how many other couples? Um, A lot. Seven other couples, I think. Yeah. And we were the youngest by at least 15 years. Maybe 10. Um, and that's the youngest to the, to the next youngest, but... Yeah. <laughs> right. But anyway... Um, oh, hold on. I get this. Whitney, thank you for the hydrate. I'm, I'm going to get to it before it goes off the screen. Yeah, catch up. Um, anyway, so the I've been to the IMG Academy, which is in Bradenton in Florida. And it's, it's nice. It's good. Um, but, um, oh, Tomcat figured it out. I got to hydrate. <laughs> Way to go, Tomcat. I mean, Lord Sean. Um, but it was... Uh, oh, Tracy just dove right into the tip jar there. Way to go, Tracy. <laughs> uh, Quinch Press says, I've had two cocktails in my earlier Zoom meeting. Both had three ounces of Maker's Mark 46. Contro. Half an ounce of Contro. Three quarters ounce of Demerara simple syrup. Aromatic bitters, chocolate bitters, and the first one had Appleton Ooh, nice. Estate 12 year rum, and the second one had Plantation OFTD with a half ounce of Portuguese cold brew. Damn, dude, you go. Yeah, the uh, Appleton, nothing like a little Jamaican rum. Yummy. Cheers, Tomcat Sean. <laughs> Tomcat Sean. Um, Tracy must have helped her out. She said, Thanks, Tracy. So, um, Mallorca. The whole reason I said, again, as I've been there, is that we, I went to play tennis at Rafa's Academy. And so, clearly, I'm not as cool as, like, the pros or whatever, but they do lessons for the lesser folks, and I fit into the lesser folks category. I mean, I'm dedicated, but I'm no Federer at all. And so, um, we do these things. There's a group of women, and one of the ladies actually here locally in Arizona started this thing, and we call them the Cups, and they're all about, well, drinking, and playing tennis. And so we have the margarita cup. So Christy fits right in. Yeah. We have the margarita cup, the espresso cup, the tea cup, the brew cup, um, the chocolate cup, the champagne cup, the citrus cup. I think I'm missing one. But um, anyway, we have all these different cups. And Quinch Press says Appleton is the bomb. Appleton is the yeah, bomb. Yeah, man. When we were in Jamaica, Jamaica, they had three different kinds of Appleton in our room. Yeah. In the little like mini bar, and we didn't know at the time because this is our first time there. We didn't know just how good it was. We're like, oh, this is just the local crap. And then of course, we got back and saw how much it cost to get here, and we're like, oh, it we should have bought more. It was actually the good stuff. Yeah. We didn't know. Um, and then you couldn't really get it here, but now you can get it here easier. But um, the athletic cup, ha, no, that's actually not one. Mm -mm. It, they do call me the athletic supporter. Right? We do. We call Christy Brian does. No one else calls supporter. me that, but Christy does. <laughs> He's our best athletic supporter. <laughs> Anyway, so Brian does go to some of these cups with me. He goes to ones in Vegas, and there's one in Hilton Head. There's one in, like I said, Bradenton, which is St. Petersburg. Um, there's one in Vail. There's one here in Arizona. Um, so they're all over the place. And Brian goes to some of them, but not all of them. And so this one, we went to test out to see if we wanted a sangria cup in Spain. And so... Uh, Beck says, I love Hilton Head. Yeah, me too. I love Hilton Head too. Um, the tennis there is quite nice as well. Um, so we were uh, asked to join these women to see, and their, I mean, it was husband, couples, to see if this was going to work out for a cup. And ironically, we went, not this, obviously not this year with COVID, but the year before. And we all loved it. And we're like, yes, yes. And so we all had plans to go back in May. And of course, we could not. So now we have plans to go back next May, inshallah, hopefully. So we'll see. But... Um, the bonus part was, is that I was afraid that Brian was going to be bored because I play tennis. I was there to play tennis. And I was like, oh, Brian, mm, sorry. But he's right. usually good at entertaining himself. I say, Brian knows how to entertain himself. Right. Especially so, when there's a rental car involved. We got ourselves a little rental car. And, and it was like a Hyundai. Yeah, something small. And like a little 1.2 liter, 1200cc <laughs> super mini. And uh, we, I bombed all over the island. And I yeah, and so you can see the island's not really that big. I didn't look up the square miles. Do you remember? No, but it's it's not. It's smaller it's small. than Maui, so I mean, yeah, it's not it's that Yeah, it's tiny. Because um, well, we went all the way around it, pretty much. Um, so it's uh, 
easy. It's not that hard. Uh, Quinch Press says, Joe Cronley is finally streaming. He only has four people watching. I'd watch, but you guys take priority. Well, we appreciate it. We <laughs> well, love if, Joe, but if we he's, appreciate it. If that. he's still on when we're done, we will rate him. That's true. We can do that. That should be the plan. If he's, if he's still on, we'll rate him. He should still be on. He'll probably have like a half a head drawn. <laughs> and by the time two hours is Oh, over. hey. Thank you, Catherine. It's nice. Thank you so much. I got an emote. Thanks to her yeah, subscription. new emote. Well, that's fun. Get the mushroom. Thank you so much for the subscription. He 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 he. I like and how you get the piece sign. And you get in just under the wire to get the free sticker, by the way. So, um, I, don't Tracy if, too? I don't know if you have my email, but anyone who subscribes in October gets one of these uh, Ghost Trap stickers. So, email me to claim your sticker. I'll just get your, I just need your mailing address. But if you don't have my email, let me know and I'll give it to you. Um, Tracy, we can hook you up. Um, I'll still get your mailbox at work. <laughs> Yeah, we're Someday not, you can go back and get it. We're not going to spend a stamp on you, Tracy. <laughs> I'll just give it to you. Um, anyway, so uh, Brian was quite good, actually, at entertaining himself. So here's how this went. We would get up in the morning, and there would be a phenomenal spread wait, for wait, breakfast. Wait. Okay, we, I do want to talk about breakfast. But first of all, let, all I to talk about. let's set the scene. So we're, right. it's an island. It is an island. There's beaches. There's mountains. What's the t what's the climate here on this island? What's what should people expect if they go to this island? Lovely. Um, we were there in what September, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it was mid eighties. Um, it did rain two days um, in the once in the afternoon and once in the kind of the morning. But aside from that, it was beautiful and you know perfectly lovely. A nice little sea breeze, not too windy. And we were actually there during the rainy season, which is September, which is why we moved the next one to May. But again, it only rained twice. But they say it can rain quite a bit if you go in September. But it was amazing. And it didn't get too cold, which is what I appreciate. Too oh, cold to me is like under 80. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, Whitney. I, I knew that. I've got your address, so it'll be fine. Okay, so Christy set the scene. We're on a beautiful, beautiful. island. We're there. We're, we're it's a tiny little island too, with tiny little roads and people zooming That's around. Right. We're and in it's the Mediterranean. Quite popular. So we were there. Also, another reason in this September is that it's right before school starts again. So this island was packed. Everybody in Europe came, was there, um, and so there were certain like beach resort areas that were packed. That's right. But the academy wasn't too bad. We were like one of the only groups there. There, I think there was one other little small group, and then there was a tennis tournament. These kids were having a tennis tour tournament that is, um, I think it was 14 and unders, which means 10-year-olds to 14-year-olds play each other. They were knocking the shit out of this ball. They were. They made me, I hit hard. Our and, room overlooked one of the courts, and you could just hear it just like, bang, bang. Wah, it was wah, awesome. Wah. And I hit hard, but these kids made me look like I had nothing. They were, and they were tiny little things, knocking the living shit out of the ball. It was really cool. Mallorca is uh, 1,405 miles square, population around 100,000. Oh, five islands in total. Yeah, but I think that only three or four actually are populated, but I'm not positive about that. Um, thank you, Quinch Press. All right, so Christy was going to lead it. Now that we've set the scene. Oh, yeah. She said, Well, you are only a cadet. <laughs> That's true. She said, so there's a breakfast spread that they did mm. every morning. Okay, so part of our deal is that you can get packages. And if you get more than, I think, six people, you can get a package, a group deal. And so... We obviously each had our own little hotel room. So on the academy, in the academy, there is um, a hotel and it also a dorm. He has his own school. And so... And don't worry if you don't like tennis. There's a lot more to this than tennis. Yeah, but we got to talk about the tennis. Come on now. So um, I got to make my window smaller here. Hold, please. It went all crazy on me. So um, the academy is in the city of Manicor and it is... Um, like I said, there is uh, hard courts, and then there is like this like large building that is the hotel and the restaurant, and then there's two other buildings that are um, dorm rooms for the kid. One's a dorm room, and one is the school. And then there's a club adjoined to that, and that has clay courts and an indoor court that Rafa built for himself. And then there is... Um, you know, when he doesn't you know, want the, the, paparazzi. the paparazzi to see him, he goes to the indoor courts. He actually said it's because when he rehabs, he doesn't want people to watch him when he's trying to, you know, build back up. He doesn't want people filling him when he sucks, in other words. And so then um, the uh, 
other areas, there's a downstairs area, which is the Rafael um, Nadal Museum experience, which is cool, which I'll show you in just a second. But Quinch Press says, how can you not love tennis? Ha 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 ha. Exactly, though. I see what you did there. So anyway, it just sits right there in this um, town, and it's just this beautiful yeah, little sleepy place. Sleepy little village. Yeah, and it's like quite small. But, you know, there's like grocery and whatever. 900,000. It's a pretty decent amount of people there. But, but the little town's not that big. Yeah, Palma is the capital, and that's where most of the people are. But um, it is, uh, it was really well done. It was really well organized. And we were warned going in that, you know, you're not going to see Rafa. He doesn't just hang out here. And this was actually um, towards the end of the season. It was after uh, the U.S. Open and um, heading into what they call the Masters Series, the playoffs for the end of the year. Tracy says, hydrate. Oh, thank you. Cheers to you. And Quinch says, my puns serve me well. We appreciate We appreciate Hey, that. with Les Dudas gone tonight, we need you here for the loves and the serves and all that stuff. Um, uh, so anyway, there is this restaurant. And uh, in the morning, with this package deal, you get uh, two hours of lessons a day for five, six days. And then you get breakfast and dinner. So lunch is on your own. And so we're like, okay, you know, we've done these room and board things before. And sometimes the food is just, mm. breakfast? Let's talk about breakfast. Could you make me breakfast in the morning, um, please? It was pretty fantabulous. It yeah. was amazing. Crunch Why Press was it says, so amazing? Crunch Press says, I just hope I don't drop a deuce. Uh, I hope you don't either. At least if you do, I don't want to know about it. Um, this restaurant, I was trying to find a picture of the restaurant. Oh, well. We'll sneak this one in. But um, so the breakfast thing was this like buffet and it is like tons of fresh fruit, fresh, fresh pastries. And then there's like yogurt and like healthy crap and granola and shit. And then there's like this big espresso machine and there's all these fresh juices and there's avocados. I mean, all this delicious stuff. And there's, it doesn't sound that exciting. And there is um, Iberia, Iberia, um, Ham. Yeah, but a Serrano ham. Um, all every day, all meals. It was just so good. Basically, like the best cheese board you've ever had in your life is laid out every morning. Plus, if you've been to France and you've had like the good croissants and the good bread and stuff, mm. this was pretty darn close. So imagine like pain de chocolat. The best cheese board you've ever had in your life. And then the, some of the best bread you've ever had in your life. And they're serving it to you every morning along with all the fruit and all the other stuff. It was delicious. It was the best part of the day. And I, But the problem is is that we'd have to go play tennis right afterwards. So we'd have to like gulp it down and then run to play tennis. But um, it was totally worth it. So this is well, us. Well, they wouldn't have to gulp it down except for the Americans wanted to sleep in extra. That's not true. They didn't start serving breakfast till 7.30. And we oh, had no. The to... Americans wanted to have their tennis before the sun got right, cause warm. because they were afraid it was going to be hot. Because they were afraid it was going to be hot. Not me. The old folks. And so, anyway, we had to be on the court at 8, so we only had... Everyone else minutes. is like, why do you want to play so early? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Quinch Press is on McEnroe tonight. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so, and, he says, and he says that he's holding court. Yeah, I saw that one, too. Um, so, anyway, this photo that you're looking at, this is us at breakfast one day, and you may not be able to tell. Let me see if I can embiggenate. That is Rafael Nadal. That is the back of his head. Sitting right there while we're at breakfast. He came. We saw him twice After they told days. us, like, you'll never see Rafael Nadal. He'll never be there. That's Rafa. Oh, my God, is this man beautiful. And a little shorter than you think. Yeah, he's only like 6'1". So Brian's like 6'2". So, mm, but what else? Um, he was in these little jeans that were fit well. I'm just saying. Fit well. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> fit well <laughs> he was adorable and super nice he like said hello in like this little shy smile and his what is now his wife but it was his fiance he got married two weeks after we left um and his sister was oh, there and let me tell you guys his car collection was parked downstairs in the garage yeah it's like aston martin porsche For beamer ferrari whatever 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 He's yeah. doing just fine, by the way. Hello. He made like $45 million. He just won the French Open for the 14th time. Come on now. Yeah. Um, we are zooming in on Rafael Nadal. Hello, Sean. Get with the picture. And Beck says, fit well and make butt squeezing motion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, that's Rafa's head right there that you're looking at. It's awesome. Um, 
Anyway, the rest of the tennis was quite cool. Anyway, this lady that's bent over half, I called, her name is Christiana. She's German. And I'm, I'm like, Christiana, you got to scoosh down so I can get a photo of Rafa. Because <laughs> we were told not to bother him. Well, whatever. So, um, anyway, we actually did have um, tennis lessons. And they were quite fun and enjoyable. And I will buzz through a few pictures of the academy here just so you can see what it looks like. If you play tennis at all, even if you like slightly suck, it was so much fun. And I will say, I've been to a lot of these tennis things and this was like the most professional, the most amazing. The tennis pros were awesome. The facilities were awesome. I mean, it it was so well done. Um, this is one of the days that it rained. It's just getting ready to come up. But this is um, this banner thing is because it was for that tournament. It was a Spanish tournament. So it was all the local Spanish kids that come to Mallorca for this big tournament. Um, and we were like, what the hell's map free? Map fire. Map free. Map fire. And then we get home and it's all over the States. Go figure. It's um, um, insurance. Insurance. I couldn't think of the word. It's insurance. I never heard of it before. But yeah, it's all over Arizona now. Yeah, it's everywhere. This is also, oh, the next one is, <laughs> so we snuck in where the kids that win get their photo taken. This is like the magic carpet kind of thing. <laughs> the the step carpet. and repeat. Yeah. And so uh, my, this is my friend Lindy. <laughs> and so Lindy and I totally snuck in and got our photo picture in front of like that we were just the great winners for this kids tournament, but whatever. We did not win, but I'm just saying. So Nothing here. wrong getting your picture taken. That's right. So here are our pros. Oh, hydrate. Nice job, Tomcat. Slash Sean. Sean Cat? Oh, Sean Cat. I think that's so. good. I think I so. I like that one. Oh, that's for you too. Thank you, Sean Cat. <laughs> so this one is our pros. The dude on the far, yes, sir, left is um, mine. His name was Yvonne. Uh, this boy is 30 years old and had four kids already. <laughs> um, and he was adorable and super nice. The girl was from actually Bulgaria, and she had just come into Spain to work at the academy. And the other dude's named Carlos on the end, and he'd been there his whole life. He actually grew up with Rafa and grew up playing with Rafa, and um, didn't have what it, he was on the like low level tour, what we call the um, the amateur tour. But he um, never got any further, and so Rafa hired him, and he's like one of the main pros. Oh, I hear Evan. Evan oh, is here. Evan. Welcome, Evan. We're talking about our adventures in Mallorca, Spain tonight. And so, here's another picture of us. Lightsaber on! If it ever loads. We're slow tonight. Um, Lindy and me and Yvonne. And then, this is a group photo. You can see how much older some of these women are that are playing. And their husbands, some of the husbands played too. The two dudes in the very center were from... Do you remember where they were from? They are from California or something. Mm. But they just happened to be there. That's right. And so they were, um, we needed two more to fill out our group, and so they started joining us. But that's not what's important. What's important <laughs> is if you follow tennis, this man right here in the center is Uncle Tony. This is Rafa's uncle, who was his coach his entire life until last year when R Uncle Rafa retired. And we saw Uncle Rafa like every Uncle single... Uncle Tony. Uncle Tony. I'm sorry. Uncle Tony every single day um, at the resort. So that's super cool for someone who loves tennis um, to see him there all the time. And he was also very nice. And the dude in front of him, um, his name is Phil. And he's a little bit crazy. But another guy over, uh, he actually is from Chile. Is that right? Is that where he was from? can't remember. But he was fluent in Spanish. And um, so he could so talk to Uncle So is seeing Uncle, Uncle Tony every day, is that like if you're a Fresh Prince fan and you get to see Carlton every day? Is no. Is it kind of like that? No. It's like seeing Will Smith. It's the person that made Will Smith. It's not a, an, an also DJ ran. DJ Jazzy Jeff? It's not an also ran. It's a per, It's the person that invented mm, Rafa. No. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Interestingly enough, too, Uncle Tony has a kid now that's in the 14s and is kicking everybody's ass. So Quinch Press reason. says, who actually is this Nadal, Nadal guy you speak of? Whatever. Well, you haven't explained anything yet. To the, to the non-tennis people. Oh my God! He, they don't know sports ball. I don't know sports ball. He is the um, number two player in the world currently. Um, number one currently is Djokovic, but we don't like to talk about him. And number three is Federer, but Federer's injured right now. 
But Rafa has won the French Open 14 times. He has 20 um, Grand Slam titles and hundreds of regular tournament titles. He's been world number one. Hun- I don't even know how many weeks. Um, he is an amazing. I know who Nadal is. Well, then why are you asking me? And he's like, how do you not know Nadal? <laughs> exactly, Bex. Thank you. Okay, so Federer's my fave too, but now I'm a huge Rafa fan since I've been here. Rafa, the only thing that bothers, bothers me about Rafa is that it takes him an hour and 47 minutes to serve because he has all these little twitches. He, has he to does do have his little routine. routine that he has to do, doesn't he? Has he has to do every time. Um, so there's also clay courts here, and so we played on the clay courts as well. Evan cheered. Yay. Now, show is you. there anything else to do on this island besides play tennis? I'm getting ready to get off the tennis. Just relax. We're going to show you one more nice little photo. I'm just teasing. Yeah, he has a whole ritual, says Bex. Yes, it is a quite the ritual. And I swear it gets longer all the time, but he's the reason they introduced the shot clock. You only have 28 seconds now between points because Rafa was taking like a minute to do all of his little twicks and perches and whatever. And throw a word for 300. Nice hey, thanks ritual. For, thanks for the cheers, Evan. We missed you earlier today, by the way, Evan. Net loss. Quinch press. That one's even... Your investment in tennis will yield a net <laughs> loss. That one's bad. Wah, wah. All right. So, we need some more Tesoro. Treasure. Tesoro means treasures. Is TNT back or just a one-night thing? Well, here's well, the problem. It may be more like once a month than once a week. Or once every two weeks. Because yeah. uh, um, the problem is, is that I play tennis. And the tennis season has started back up, and I play on at night, so that interrupts things. But anyway, I fell asleep. My sleeping is so far off right now. Yeah, I know. I, I saw that you sent in something. Thank um, you, Quinch. Like at 2 o'clock in the morning or midnight or something the other day. Yeah, Evan said he's on nights right now. Mm. All right, I will stop um, showing you pictures of this, and we will look at other things. But that's a beautiful shot of a wine gl- or a beer glass. Beer. Over- that's what we would do every afternoon. These people do not mess around either. They fit right in with us. That's true. And when you're in Mallorca, the mm. beer at the resort, one euro. Right. One euro. Like a Coke or a Sprite or something at the resort is like five euros. Yes. So guess what? I'm having the beer. One euro. Yeah. Thursday night tennis works for us. Exactly. It still, it still sings the same thing. Um, I just want to show you one other little thing, and then we'll talk about the island itself. If I can stop this from embiggenating. Oh, that's a video. That's weird. Didn't mean to do that. Are you uh, showing us videos now? I didn't mean to. That's do. new. I can show you a video. Um, Lord Sean and Tracy made their archaeological debut Ooh, earlier today. That's right. I heard that. It was awesome. Tomcat cheered. Oh, Tomcat's learning all kinds of new tricks. Uh, oh, Tomcat, thanks, for, thanks for cheering five bits, Tom, Lord Tom Sean, Lord <laughs> Sean Cat. Um, Tomcat's going to come back and be like, what happened to all my bits and all my stuff? And you're going to be like, mm, Tracy told me to push the button. That's right. Spend it all. So another really kind of cool thing about... Um, the uh, we look like morons. You did not look like morons, Tracy. Y'all were adorable. You did the stuff. It was cute. I missed the video. I was sad. Um, I have a recording, and I will show it to you later, Bex. Um, so the other thing about this academy is that uh, in the basement of this hotel is uh, Raphael did a whole um, a whole museum. I'm I'm reading the stuff. Sorry. Oh, I gotta hydrate. Hold on. Hold please. Tomcat says, "Hey, I like the video." The video was cool. Um, Anyway, Rafa did this whole neat museum, and the reason I want to show it to you is that it's all this, like, really super cool stuff. There's, like, this weird little tunnel thing. It was super high tech. And there's this little weird tunnel thing you walk through to get there, and then you... It was like whoever worked on Google Glass was like, (laughs) I'm moving to Spain, and I'm working for Rafa Nadal. It was the weirdest, coolest thing. And um, there was, like, trivia games and, like, this stuff where you could, like, play different things... And um, we kicked ass at the trivia, by the way. Lindy and I beat everybody in the whole room. Um, And then there was this VR thing where you could play against Rafa. And he would serve to you and you'd have to try to return it. And But he did all of his little ticks before he would serve, just like he would really do it. So they, like, really filmed him serving or something. And you couldn't come near hitting that ball. 
this is almost a butt shot, by the way. This is not not or apropos, mm. but um, it it was uh, impossible. I couldn't I couldn't return any of them. None of us could. It was the craziest thing. Impossible. The other thing was that it was full of other Spanish winners. So there was like... Um, like different sports and stuff. Yeah, Formula One and motorcycle and um, the Olympic torch went through Mallorca apparently at one point. And so there was all this cool different stuff. Here's the Olympic torch. And there was all this neat stuff that he put this whole neat museum about kind of Spanish pride and especially Mallorca and stuff. It was actually really well done. It was super cool. Um, here's a um, Formula One car that was suspended in the museum. And then, of course, there were all of his trophies. Um, and there was even like a virtual Rafa, like a Rafa hologram. Oh, yeah. He would talk to you. He came in and talked to you. That's what that video was, apparently. We filmed him. Uh, posture check, dude. Uh, thank you, Quench. And two hydrates. We'll get to that in just a second. Um, and so uh, he had... Oh, that's me too. Uh, and so at this point, when this museum was, was going, he had won 10 French Opens. He just won 14 two weeks ago. So Wow. 10, 10 seems just like so far behind now. Thank you, Quench. The previous record was 9, and now he's at 14. So that's impressive. That is impressive. I mean, 14... Winning 14 of anything but, is very impressive. And these are, this is the French Open. Massive. Oh, crap. Christy tells a childhood story. <laughs> there we go. Now I have to think of a childhood story. All right. Well, while you, while you go to the next slide. I'm, think, I'm getting it up. This is we, all about you. Are we going to tell one about, what's all me? The next section. Oh, okay. Are we going to tell one about your childhood with your dad or your mom or... Your grandma, or getting ready for Thanksgiving. I mean, what's? Do I have one for you? What's, what's something that they haven't heard? Before? I swear, I think of these things and then I forget them the second I get in here. That's why I'm trying to give you some prompts. Hold on, I'm trying to pull up this and biganate this, as Brian would say. Um, French open, not the quench open. Ah ha ha! Nice, nicely done. I see what you did there. Nicely done. Let's see. We've talked about hunting. We've talked about the lake and skiing. Mm. Um, I could talk about... Uh, oh, Quinch is on his third cocktail. By we the haven't way. talked about your grandma or the library yet. Oh, we could talk about the library. Have we not talked about Grandma McNaughton and the no, library? No, no. If you have any stories, we haven't heard them yet. All right. So um, my grandmother, uh, my mom's mom... So this is Christy Tells a Childhood Story. This one's going out to Catherine. Christy, whenever you're ready, go ahead. I'm waiting. Before I talk. I don't know what you're waiting for. It's your turn to tell a childhood story in your own time, in your own words. Whatever comes into your mind, Christy, go ahead now. Thanks. Quinch says, we're in the library. Shh. So anyway, my grandmother, my mom's mom, went to Stevens College, which was a private college um, in what, the 50s? Early 50s, maybe? I don't know when that was. I've got no idea. Um, Mid-50s? I don't know. But anyway, she went there to get a man. She did not go to get a college. She went there to get a man. And so she met my uh, future grandfather there. Um, but while she was there, uh, she was interested in like education and libraries and stuff. And so uh, after they got married and after the war, after the Korean War, which my grandfather was in, I guess, um, they uh, were settled down in my small town, the, the one next door to where I live, the larger small town. <laughs> and um, she became, I always thought that she was someone who's really important in the library. I always thought that she was like the head of the library. Come to find out she was the secretary. All these years, I thought she was like a librarian or assistant librarian or something really cool. She was the secretary. But, but she whatever. could have been like Noah Wiley. We don't know. Yeah, that's true. No, it was not like that. But anyway, um, so 
she this library was like really old it's one of the first things built in this town and so you walk into this giant building with these big columns and there was actually a lion out front and you walk up these massive marble stairs and then you go up to the second floor of marble stairs and then you go through these great big double doors and there was her giant wooden desk and she says who are you gonna call (laughs) i don't know and so mrs frizzle that's funny um, and so, anyway, this giant desk was right there. So I always thought she was super important because she had this really giant wooden desk. Turns out she was a secretary. But anyway, um, she would have to watch me. So my parents got divorced when I was really young. But before that, my mom got hired to teach school in town. And so my mom taught, like, second grade, I guess, or first grade. I don't remember what she taught then. But um, so somebody would have to watch me while my mom did meetings and stuff like that at school. So my mom would dump me at the library. And so I was like maybe five or six years, five years old, I guess, running around the library. I didn't tell the story already. Nope. Um, and so I was running around the library and um, I would be in trouble all the time and bored. And so my grandma taught me the Dewey Decimal System. So by the time I was about six, I was shelving books based on the Dewey Decimal System. And I still pretty much know the Dewey Decimal System in my head now. And I was learning to read because I would start reading and she'd dump me in the kids section and hand me books. And so by the time I was about seven or eight, I was reading at probably uh, 11th grade level. And so I was reading like all these books I should never have been reading, like slutty romance novels. And like, we just watched Rebecca. Did you all watch Rebecca on, what was it on? It was on Netflix. Netflix the other day. That's by Daphne du Maurier. Um, I did my um, book report when I was about in third grade on Rebecca. <laughs> third grade? By Daphne du Maurier. And it's like this whole like sinister, twisty, is your wife cheating yeah, on you? Yeah, it's like a film noir. Yeah, it's totally film noir. It was a Hitchcock here. And I read that book when I was like eight years old and did a book report on it. And I got in big trouble because I wasn't supposed to be reading those kinds of books. My eighth grade book report was on scruples. And if you don't know what that is, you should look that up too. I got in trouble for that one. But anyway, the whole deal is that... Um, Part of the reason that I love to read and that I read so fast um, is that my grandma was a librarian and she was bored with me. And so she'd be like, here, file this or here, shelve these books or memorize the Dewey Decimal. And she'd like quiz me on it and shit. And that was fun. And I got dumped with her all the time. And then when my parents got divorced, I was about eight years old and um, my mom had three jobs so that she could pay for us. And um, so I was with grandma all the time. And so my grandma, like on certain days of the week, she would reward me with a McDonald's drive through And so we could get like fries and a, and a cheeseburger or something. And, but to earn that kind of stuff, I'd have to like read four books and shelve 10 books and do something else. And then grandma would take me to McDonald's. And so I was like all in to get the fries. <laughs> Food is a reward is the, is the whole mm. problem with our generation. That's true. What, what are scruples? Yeah, I didn't really have any. Yeah. Don't forget the gray lady. Oh, I love the gray lady. Yeah, that's another good one. But anyway, um, ooh, have you seen the new Rebecca movie on Netflix? Yeah, that's what we were just talking about. Yeah, I, I that's what I'm talking about. I read that book when I was eight years old. But um, the uh, bo- the it's a great book. It's a great movie. I love Daphne du Maurier. But anyway, um, so there my grandma would reward me with food by... But there would be like quizzes and homework and stuff. And I didn't get it that it was quizzes and homework. So I still have the Dewey Decimal System memorized. And I would walk into the library and I kind of thought I ran it. So there would be like college students coming in because this was on a college campus. There's like a college that has like 500 students. And little precocious Christie's like, let me show you where that's at. And they're like, "Um, I need to look up this history section. And they would be talking to the person working. And I'd be like, "Uh, that's the 300s. You need to go over there. And (laughs) they would all be like, what? And there's like this small child telling them what to do. Go figure. But anyway, um, there you go. My grandma was a librarian secretary and uh, she taught me the love of reading. And just as a little side note, I, I read about 800 words per minute for content. So that's and very Christy helpful. And Christy tends to remember all that stuff too. And I tend to remember all of it. Uh, and that's another childhood story by Christy. Uh, Mc- and McDonald's apple pie in the '80s before they ruined them. Oh, agreed. When they were really fried. When they were fried. Holy shit! And they mm. would burn your lips off. Yeah, that was really good. I appreciate that. That's a lot. Yeah. Before they were doing that, and are they really healthier baked? Not at McDonald's. I don't yeah, think no. so. The contents on the inside, probably not. So what's the difference? Just fry them and let me have it. <laughs> okay, Brian. This is your section. Okay. This is when you left me and went running around. Well, 
I didn't leave you. It's that I don't play tennis, so I had to go do something to fill Is the little time. precocious Christy that much different than adult precocious Christy? <laughs> Probably Brian should answer that. I, I'm i glad that I don't know. You don't know? Well, I didn't know you when you were five years old or eight oh, years old or anything. Well, that's true. No, they're pretty much the same. I actually am probably calmer and more toned down because I understand the rules now more than I did when I was a kid. <laughs> there you go. She's she's. she's it's more... like psychopath. I can understand how to fit into society now, and I couldn't when I was a kid. <laughs> That's right. Now Christy says, "What would a real human do?" Exactly. <laughs> how should I actually answer this? <laughs> okay, so babe. All right. So this was a church on top of a mountain that I discovered while driving around Majorca. I didn't know you were going to show this, so I don't remember what the name of the church was. But the cool thing about this church is, one, it has its own cafe. Every church should have its own cafe because they also serve beer. So <laughs> Yay, Catholics. <laughs> yeah. Spanish Catholics, they're awesome. They're like, come to our church, look at the views. I mean, amazing views. Like one of the highest points on the island you could see forever. And sit here and sip a beer and, and look at the views. They also had goats. Oh, hold on, I'm going to show the restaurant bar. Okay. Hold on. Um, Evan says, my daughter reads extremely fast. How do you find out how many words you can read? There's actually speed reading tests, um, and you can train yourself to read faster. People that, you know, do a lot of degrees and that kind of thing. Are we hydrating? Cheers hydrating. to you, Lord Sean Cat. Mm. But you can take speed reading tests. You can find them online and stuff. Somebody just has to monitor it, and what you do is you, you typically read... A section it could be a paragraph a page or whatever and then you have to answer questions so that you know that you're getting the content and not just skimming through the words true speed reading you actually don't read all the words like I don't read the an and and all that crap I don't need to know any of that and I don't read the periphery stuff like there were gold curtains who gives a shit if there were gold curtains what happened in the story so that's part of the speed reading thing it's a way your mind processes the words you comprehend the word before you even actually see it and you kind of read half the page you only read the edge and so you can go through quick. But there are tests and stuff out there that you can take. Thanks for the posture check, Quinch. I don't know if you oh, heard that. But goats! My, I, I popped in like five different places. Yes, but I heard it. Uh, and Quinch Press says, goats are the greatest of all time. Well done, Quinch Press. That's funny. You're on the ball with the puns tonight. Hey, and, and Rafa, a goat, just saying. Here's some goat butts. Oh, wait. So, yeah, so there's a restaurant bar in the church. Yeah. Uh, the other thing the church had was they had uh, sports trophies inside of there. So they had, like, the jersey of the best soccer player in town and trophies and stuff like that. And there are some of the goat butts. That one goat, if you can see, has, like, a perfect dividing line where it's half white and half brown and black. It's almost like two goats put together. And I'd never seen that before. Where <laughs> they sewed him up the middle. Yeah, he's cut perfectly <laughs> in half. And I was like, holy crap, I have to take a picture of this. He found another friend, too. Don't tell our kitty. <laughs> and uh, Evan says, yeah, she sees, sees like three lines at a time. Yeah, yeah. And she probably is a very good reader. So, yeah. And that's actually super handy when you have to read, like, you know, tons of chapters and papers and all that crap later yeah. on in life. It's good for college. That's for sure. There's a kitty. Oh, uh, there's one of the stray cats. So, at the, at the church, there were a gazillion stray cats. A gazillion. It's a mathematical term. Gazillion. It is a mathematical term. Yeah, but there were these, like, wall. It was so beautiful. Like, you could wander around, and there was, like, little hiking trails, and there were stray cats, and there were goats, and it was just, it was so, you could see how high up it is. It was, like, one of the highest points on the island. So, There's a happy Brian. I would say it was 15 to 20 degrees cooler at the top of this little mountain where the where the church was versus the the part down where they were playing tennis. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when it was like, you know, 80 degrees uh, down where they were playing tennis, I could go up and it would be like, you know, 65 or 70 degrees up there. Burr. And uh, Quinch, Quinch hydrate. would you hydrate. Thank you, Quinch. Hydrate. Cheers hydrate. to you. So here's just some of the stuff that he took at this church. You can see the fields behind it, man. It's really pretty. I didn't get to go oh. to this one. I missed this one. Oh, the whole island was just amazing. So while they were playing tennis, I was just out exploring. And so I was finding different places to go and different things to see. But this was one of my favorite places because it was it was close by. So if I hauled balls, I could get there and hang out and come back before they were done with their tennis lessons. Now, I have no idea what this is. I, that's a lion. But the next one, it kind of creeps me out. Hold on. Wait for it. I'm waiting for it. Wait for it. I'm waiting for it. Wait for it. It's very slow interwebs, as we saw earlier today. 
Oh, so this was weird, guys. No shit. Inside the church were these little dioramas. And they were behind these like glass or plexiglass panels. And so there was dioramas of like, you know, Moses leading the Jews through the wilderness or whatever. And there was dioramas of the Last Supper and dioramas of the crucifixion or whatever. But there was this diorama of like, I guess, the baby Jesus. Is that some, Mary? And like Obi-Wan Kenobi in the background? <laughs> I'm not sure. And with caves, because there's caves all over this island, so that's what they would thought was the wilderness or something. I don't know, but there were these dioramas, and I had to get some pictures because it was <laughs> insane. And they're like in these weird little side rooms off the main churchy area. And so you could go and look at these little dioramas and stuff. It was really cool. Um, Quinch says he's been going on nightly walks. Average temp has been around 55 degrees, and I still go on my walks in T-shirts and short. No. mm Yeah, I played tennis last night in, like, three layers because it was 58 degrees, and I was dying. <laughs> and Quinch says diorama, not diorama. I'm drinking, dude. I don't know. I know. I, every time he says diorama, he says it his whole life. Diorama, diorama, dorama, Dora the Explorer. I don't yeah. know. I know. He always says, he, he said it his, since I've known him, he's always said to you wrong. But thanks for calling me out. I appreciate I, it. I get tired of correcting him, so I just let it go. But thank you for calling it out. Here's another little church scene. Oh, yeah. Beautiful stained glass windows. Like, the European way. There you go. That's right. It's a diorama. <laughs> I mean, wait. It's a diorama. <laughs> and Bex is like, well, I'm not the only one that noticed that Brian's drunk. I mean that he pronounced it funny. I'm not drunk yet. Okay, he's not drunk yet, but Bex, I mean, not Bex, uh, Tracy and Sean, I told you about the cat incident earlier, so. Oh, yeah, that was fun. I was laughing. I was crying. <laughs> oh, so here's, so there's like a hill. You can take a hike to this hill where there's a cross and then look back at the church. And so <laughs> it's a it's a fortified church with like walls and stuff, you know, because it would have been like, I don't know, fortified back in the day. A fortress. Yeah, yeah. it was a fortress. Um you know, the church and the military kind of hung out together back then. So, anyway, that's it from far away. The church and the military, the church and the in the country would seem as Portuguese. They got taken over by the Portuguese first and that's then right. the Spanish. Um, let's see. Quinch says, oh, I'm definitely at least somewhat inebriated. <laughs> Tracy said he had legitimately questioning himself. And I'm an English teacher, LOL. Um, Whitney said that my mom, ha ha, my mom posted some Jesus meme on Facebook a while back and I had to tell her it was a picture of Obi-Wan. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. All right. Here's another little lovely scene there of the water. Oh, uh, look how beautiful it is. One of the beaches we went to. I'm going to get to the beaches right now. Yeah. I shot that at one of the, one of the beaches, one of the rocky beaches. Should we do dragon caves next? Yeah. Which, I don't have very many on dragon caves. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's underground and there was an opportunity to take a lot of pictures. So I stole some from the interwebs because that's what I do. Um, so fortified with 12 essential vitamins and minerals. Ain't that the way it true? Whitney says it was 36 degrees on my way to work today and no coat necessary. Um, Are you high? Where a, where do you work? The Arctic? No and, shit. 36 um, degrees. No, I don't think so. I'm not even visiting. I mean, I okay. might visit in this in July. Cuevas del Drach, Dragon Caves. So, Cave of the Dragons. First of all, I have to pat myself on the back because I had the idea to take everybody here, and end up being way, way cooler than it was promised. Super cool. There was a shit ton of people, but super, super cool. So, there's like this little. Um, and I'm literally like, I saw a sign in the road that said there were caves. Yeah. And apparently, so this whole island is made out of this, like, weird... It's like crushed shell, almost. Geological weirdness that the whole island is made out of. And um, Barbados, actually, is made similarly. But mm -hmm. um, anyway, it caused these weird cave formations that are super cool. And there's, like, this whole little, like, touristy little, like, tchotchke shops and drinks and ice cream and stuff like that. And then you walk down into this amazing, it's actually four caves and they're all connected. But they're the biggest caverns I think I've ever been in my 25 life. 25 meters deep, 25 meters down you go. Could just people actually share that you and McGregor Obi-Wan photo non-ironically. <laughs> <laughs> what camera are you using, Brian, to take those photos? These are all my iPhone or Brian's iPhone. Yeah. 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 It's uh, iPhone lazy. 10s. Yeah, because so this was before, last year. So before they had the night vision, I don't have that yet. 
Yeah, this one, this photo I actually stole from the internet, but uh, the rest of ones were. Right? I'm so sad that I won't be going to Toronto this winter. I derive a sick pleasure from walking around in less layers than the locals when I'm from Phoenix. <laughs> so it's Ew. No. Did I mention I like to be between the Tropic of Capricorn and the Tropic of Cancer at all times? I never like to get above or below those. Right in the equator zone. Um, anyway, this cave is like the coolest freaking thing you've ever seen. Geologically, and it's like, really interesting. I, and I, I, I can't even really articulate it. Mm -hmm. Like, you talk about caves, you're like, yeah, yeah, whatever, I've seen a cave. You have not seen a cave mm -hmm. until you've been here. And in the middle of this cave is a giant lake. This, it is an underwater lake. It's called Lake, something starts with an M, Martel or something like that. And it is, um... Oh, thanks for the follow, Black and Jade. Thank you so much. <laughs> if you're not above me, you're true that. Um, anyway, there's this, like, huge, like, lake in the middle of this cave. Okay, so that sounds cool. First of all, there's water everywhere running through it because, you know, it's a cave and an island. But then you walk around this corner and there's this giant, like seated area there's benches for like hundreds of people and you're like what the hell and you sit down and a boat comes up two boats two boats and there's people well, no no they turn off all the lights all the first lights. of all it's super dark you can see this in the states completely dark you can't i mean you're underground there's no there is no light and then all of a sudden there's music and you can't see it in this photo because they're actually in the background of this photo. But there is a boat that comes out and they are playing instruments. There's an entire orchestra. And they're playing like Vivaldi and Beethoven and stuff. And there's like this whole concert and then a few lights come Resonating up. Resonating throughout the... Echoing and it throughout echoes, the caves. It is amazingly cool. And then uh, you can be ferried on these little boats, which is what this picture is. So you can be the tourists and you get ferried on these little boats back to the other side of the cave where there's like a little entrance or you can just walk. And we just walked because it's super cool and there was a really long line. But who knew there was an orchestra playing underground in a dragon cave on Mallorca, Spain. And, super uh, cool. Catherine says, hey, have you guys ever taken a trip to the caves near Sierra Vista? I have not, have you? We've not, but if they play music in a cave in a boat, I'll be really disappointed now yeah. that we went and did that somewhere else. These caverns sound amazing, no pun intended. Exactly, they were super amazing. Probably cheaper to just go on the pirate's ride, lol. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Actually, you know, this trip was super economical. I was gonna say, once you get there, and everything's the, pretty cheap. The academy, it was cheaper to go to Rafa's Academy than it is to go to IMG in Florida. Like, by far. Two days in Florida cost me what six days in Spain cost me. So yeah, it was it was a very good bargain. It was so And neat. once you're there, all the food and drink. Like I said, unless you want a Coca-Cola, yeah. <laughs> that, that costs money. But, like, beer and food and everything, they're like, whatever. So here's a little fun excerpt, first of all. Let me just run through these, then we'll talk about food, too, and beer and wine. There's a cute little picture of Brian coming. Uh... Well, maybe. Someday. Am I holding a man bag? What's that? It's your hat. Oh, it's a hat. It's your righty hat. There it goes. It was too embiggenated. He is got a writing hat on. Because we are at Rancho Sacoma. That's right. Rancho Sacoma. Ponies y burros. Uh, I chose the pony over the burrow. Yeah, we did not ride burros. We rode ponies. And they were little ponies, let me tell you. So, here is Brian and his pony. Assistant lead Biganator. <laughs> <laughs> These are getting better, Quench. I like that one. Assistant. I'm going to make a note of that one. I haven't seen me on a pony Come on, yet. load. There's me in a pony. There's Brian in a pony. Uh-oh, Tracy redeemed a hydrate. Brian in the pony. And here's me in a pony. Thank you, Tracy. That's not the most flattering picture of me. The pony looks good, though. That's all that matters. You've used that one before? Hmm. That's still a good one. Um, here is a pony. A pony. Yeah. With a W. Pony. Pony. Me and a pony. It's like he's making fun of my accent there, Lord Sean. You should hear Lord Sean. Here we are 
walking away and you know this is like an official really osha worried about facility because i'm in and, shorts and flip-flops and what you guys can't see is uh, here you go we're right next to the water so you yeah. can see the ocean to the left and then the the beach to the right so. and there was like two other people on here there's another couple with us um and we but of course christy's always the one who can actually ride yeah well you people were super slow Katie had to teach me that ponies are not young horses. <laughs> That's funny. Ponies are not young horses. <laughs> no. You should hear me after a drink or two, then it really comes out. Yeah, I know. I hear you, Lord Sean. Me too. Brian makes fun of me. I don't appreciate it. We um, rode these little ponies to a um, ruin, another Portuguese um, fort. A fort. It was fun. And it was super cool. It was like this weird rectangle shape with a triangle cut into it and a little drawbridge over a moat if it ever loads. Yeah, and I think they said two people had to stay there and be on guard for like six months at a time. Yeah, th which is weird. But um, look how cool that thing is. You're a little pony. Exactly. Yeah. It's where Bill Cipher lived. <laughs> I don't think so, but I got that. It's a Gravity Falls reference. That's I right. got that. That's right. So here's the guns where the, they had to stay man the planks as it were and look how beautiful yeah, so that there's is. like an actual moat around this thing and cannons and this was like a little a little baby fort right there on the beach weird mageddon that's right weird mageddon baby and so there is a uh, the upper floor and the lower floor obviously and there was like nothing here so whoever had had to be stationed here in the oh, 1800s late yeah. 1700s would have sucked <laughs> Whitney's like, two turntables and a microphone. Yeah, they'd have wished. <laughs> exactly. Because it was literally like, they didn't have a pot to piss in. Like, yeah, it was, that's yeah. It. But, because we were there, um, and it's now touristy, there was a lovely cafe, and you could have a timeout and get a cocktail, which that's is right. always important. Get off your horse, look at the fort, and buy a drink. Which, you know, that rolls. It's not an original moat. They need to remote that. <laughs> oh, 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 that's bad. Hey, is that a blue Hawaiian? <laughs> yeah, it's not a blue Hawaiian, but it might as well be. That literally gave me an outburst. <laughs> All right, let's see. Um, here's just some here's some beach photos. I didn't have too uh, many of these. So the cool thing about the beaches here was there's everything from like the hippie granola crunchy. You know, I'm just gonna go hang out at the beach next to the woods to the like middle class beach to like the upper class you know like yeah. the upper scale like where you had to like pay for your chair on the sand and stuff so th it was kind of fun because you could go and explore different beaches and see different things everything from you know camping to like four star resorts and so we would just drive as far as we could to get to the next beach to see a different beach each and day. it's also um there were like little beach there were like uh, chair police because you oh, had yeah. to, there were like little uh, things strapped to the poles. There'd be like a little ramada and a like an umbrella thing and two chairs. And then attached to that is like where you have to pay. And if you haven't paid, you don't have the right card in there. And so then they come along and they're like, you owe. And it's like a parking meter. Like someone could yeah. pay for two hours and leave after 30 minutes. But if you go in there, they're like, no, 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 no. That's not your pay. You don't get to be on their money. Yeah. You got to pay. <laughs> you got to start over. Because it's like they would mark your tire like they do for parking <laughs> meters or whatever. You're like, shit. That's right. They're like, we chalked your ass. You need to pay. <laughs> and then we ran into this one. Hold on. I thought that was just pretty water. Brian took that photo. It's a nice little water. Coming. Why is the interwebs so slow? It's not the interwebs. It's not? No, nah, it's just Streamlabs or something. Here we go. Cocoa Beach Romantica Bar. Romantica. It was Romantica. Yes. Cocoa Beach. Very pretty. I had a giant glass of wine, which is coming. Giant, you say? Giant Quinch Press says, interesting facts. If you mention two of anything and add, and a microphone... If they use the word or two. There you go. There's Christy in her glass of wine. And I had a giant glass of wine and a giant pizza. Mmm. 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 And... Oh, my gosh. No, seriously, guys. The pizza. Oh. I mean, it's Spain. It's not Italy, but wow. It was really, really good. It was These really people good. know their bread as well. Europeans know their bread. Yeah. They know their bread. They know their everything. It was amazing. And this... Um, 
pizza, you know, that's like as big as half of the table. I ate the entire thing and I'm not, I don't feel a little tiny bit bad about that. It was so, so good. Yeah, it was delicious. Amazing. Delicious pizza. Right there on the beach. And unlike Paris, they don't charge you extra to eat on the patio. So yeah. it was very nice. That's good too. Um, so there are also like these little, there's, this was like the swanky area. And so there's all, this is where we went horse riding actually. And there's all these like hotels that are literally right on the water. And there's these residences. And you would like, if you look behind me in that photo, you could see like there's a driveway and a car right behind me. There's literally a driveway and a hotel or a house right there. It's just crammed right on the in water. There. Yeah. Super cool. Here's some of these. We get you charged by the chair. <laughs> it's coming up. The next one shows you how you charge by the chair. But yeah, the, the the beachfront residences were amazing. Oh, yeah, yeah, there you go. Here's your charge by the chair. <laughs> yeah, this is a fun little beach down on a little trail. And they this was early, early in the morning. This was probably like 5.30 or 6 a.m. And they were, they were setting up all the chairs for the day. Why in the hell were you there at 6 a.m.? Uh, uh, you guys are playing tennis. I was not playing tennis at 6 a.m. I'm surprised, though, that the Germans aren't already out there staking their That's planes. true. You probably can. If you look really close, there's probably towels on there that are the Germans This was the day it was me and one of the other husbands went. Oh, and, that's right. I remember that. And we went and found one of the beaches, Cocoa Beach. And then here's the last one on the beach. If it ever loads. I don't want to give it away. It's a super cool photo. Okay. We'll wait with anticipation. Say it. Say it. Oh, it's a sandcastle guy. Look how cool that horse looks. Yeah, it's amazing. What talented people. And patience, man. I have zero of that. Well, and not only patience. Like, he knows it's going to get washed away every night. Yeah, you're going to give it up. There's more of the pay for... The little huts in the background. Mm-hmm. You have to, we were we paid for those little huts. And Tracy's like, wow. I know, isn't that amazing? And when you don't want to get sunburned, you'll gladly pay a euro or two for one of those little uh, umbrellas. Patient. That's right. Antissa. Did you guys see the uh, Jack Black? Jack Black time warp video this week. Oh, so good. Doing his little Rocky Horror Picture Show. Too funny. I miss Rocky Horror. Did I mention mm -hmm. I was um, Columbia and Rocky Horror Picture Show? There's a childhood story for you. All I see is gray. Hold, please. We're all waiting on Christy. Hold, please. Oh, wait. Hold, it's a, please. It's a rock tunnel over the road. We drove, We did. There's a place called the um, Sierra de... Shit, I forgot. <laughs> That's not really its name. Starts with but a T. Whatever this place is, it's one of the number one places for bicycle riders in on the whole island. And they are not kidding. There was a shit ton of them in yeah. the way. And then also, if you like to drive cars, they're like, you got to get up early to beat the bicyclers, but drive this road. So it, it like goes through the mountains, and it was so pretty and so scenic. And this is considered two lanes, and you you can't tell, but it's not. No, it's it's maybe <laughs> especially. Plus, plus bicyclers. Yeah, it's it's maybe eight foot or something wide. It's tiny. Evan says, yeah, and you lived in a crack house. I did not live in a crack house. It was an acid, acid house. Acid house. Like totally different. Different. Totally different. Yeah, so there you go. Crack in the rock. You get to drive right through it. It's super cool. It was just a neat place. Beautiful drive. Rocky Horror inside joke. Uh -huh. All right. We'll check that one out, Quench. Thanks. Um, and then there were, this is like the beginning of this little scenic drive thing. There was, or at the end, I, oh no, this is where we, um, they had a little restaurant where you could, again, stop and have cocktails in the middle of your twisty, turvy drive. Why would you not pull over and get a beer? Yeah, you're European. Of course you're going to, you know, pull over. Have, have a, a beer. beer. Yeah. But it's neat, this little archways. Oh yeah, I remember this. This is like halfway. Yeah. Oh, was, hydrate. Thank you, Whitney. Oh, yay. We've almost drank in our bottle of drinking, drinking. We've almost drank it. We've almost drank in our bottle of wine, our babies. All right. Hard to believe I'm a college professor. All right, now we are ending on your lighthouse. Oh, okay. Here we go. I'm pulling it up. Hold, please. Is this the work. same lighthouse I painted? Yes, that's oh. the whole point. Well, we might have to do like a side by side or something. Well, this is know. a view first. This is just the view from it, first of all, before you get excited. And we're waiting, and we're waiting. Oh, very, very beautiful. 
see part of the island from the lighthouse. Yes, and here is me. Clearly the same day, I have the same dress on. I must have done everything in one day. Let me tell you, at the lighthouse, there's like coffees and sodas, and there's like a little freezer full of ice creams, and you're hot, and you want ice cream. No. <laughs> do not get the ice cream at the lighthouse. It was freezer burn and horrible. I did not get an ice cream, so I was perfectly fine with that. I had a Diet Coke. I know that's surprising. And I think we had a beer, too. I know that's surprising. So here I am at the rails. So there's something special about the way this little bit above my head comes uh, in the island, the way it works around. I don't know. Something special about my orca. All right. Here is the far away view coming up. So that's Quich, similar. Quichpro says, Ferb's dad is played by Rocky Horror Mastermind Riff Raff actor ah! Richard O'Brien. In the clip wow. I shared, Herb's dad, Lawrence, complains that the horror. horror movie he is watching doesn't have enough rock and roll musical numbers. That's funny. And Quinch redeems the hydrate. That is funny. Cheers. I'll have to watch it now. I don't usually watch Phineas and Ferb, but if it's got a Rocky Horror thing, I'll watch it. All right, so yeah, there's the lighthouse. As we approached... Oh, and there's the version I painted. Not too shabby. And here's a close, here's an embiggenated one. Pretty close, if it ever loads. It's a different view, but same idea. Coming. Wait for it. Oh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, once you're up on it, it's hard to get shots for sure. But it was so impressive. I mean, I've been to lighthouses in America, but this was like out on the rocks, like jutting out into the ocean. Yeah, it is. Super cool. Oh, hey, look, that's pretty good, babe. Thank you. Look, you got skills. It's like I know something. It's like you got art skills or something. Um, so for my archaeology friends and students, this was inside. Quinch is like, Phineas and Verb is one of my two favorite cartoons, second only to Kim Possible. Mm. I used to watch Kim Possible. I haven't watched it for years. So inside this place is the finds that they have found out down in front of the lighthouse. These are amphoras. And a couple of these are Egyptian. And I'm just glancing and because they're up on a wall and it's kind of hard to set. Yeah, Beck says gasp. Um, there are definitely Egyptian. There are Greek. Um, can you embiggenate that a little bit? I could. I have another one too. But um, And they're for sale. These are price tags. Yeah. Yeah, price tags, because this is just shit they found down by the water. With barnacles on it, yeah. Um, so this is, uh, this one's Greek. You can tell by the shape of the bottom. This is a Greek amphora, probably held wine. And it is 142 euros that you two could own it. I about had a fucking heart attack when I saw that. I thought I was going to have to, like... Pull me out. Put it, yeah, I thought I was going to, like, gag Christy and take her out of there. Yeah, I was like, are you fucking kidding Bex me? Bex is like, no. Yeah. And, and somewhere, someone's posting the, like, uh, Indiana Jones thing, being like, it belongs in a museum. It does belong in a museum. Um, this one is Egyptian. You can tell by the base at the bottom there with the side amphoras. <laughs> this one was probably for, like, an oil of some kind. And and Whitney's like, I was just going to ask if those are price tags. And yes. Bex actually just said, it belongs in a museum. <laughs> Beat you to it, Brian. And so these actually, um, these were they, what they considered to be the more valuable ones. And so you could, these had numbers. And so you had to ask about the process, the process. And big and A, please. And big and A. Oh, I turned it sideways. That was wacky. Um, and so these are also Greek. These are very much Greek. Tell by the pointy bits at the bottom. But and again, price tags. These are the, we have others. Sale of amphorae with marine life. That's called barnacles. We don't really want the fucking barnacles, but these are Greek and amphora. Are you kidding me? I about, I about hey, lost my shit. They got to keep this lighthouse going somewhere. It's all Greek to me. <laughs> well done, Quinch. Yeah. Anyway, I about lost my crap. Hey, good to see you, Monique. We're going to raid Joe if he's still on when we're done. Oh, nice. I'd get so angry. Yeah, I was... Not pleased. So here is the um, uh, Formentor, is the area of the island we're on. It's that little bit at the pointy side there. And it just talks about the formation of the island and stuff. And that's where this lighthouse is, which makes it kind of cool. But again, Brian did a nice job there Thank with you, the babe. drawing. Thank you so much. It was fun. I love... Joe's up to 15 people. Nice job, Joe. Oh, good job, Joe. Kicking our ass. 
All right. Hello. Okay. Well, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us. I know it's been a while since we've done a TNT, so we'll just do a little bit of uh, housekeeping, and then we'll go do a raid real quick. So remember, if you are I'm a... I'm cashiered. Hey, thank you, Tom Cap. If you're a subscriber, make sure to answer our emails so we can send you one of these ghost trap strickers. Strickers? If you are coming up on your sixth month as a subscriber, six months in a row, not I did two months and then took two months off and then came back <laughs> six months in a row. Let me see if I can get this to focus. You'll get one of these nice stay on target buttons. So make sure to let us know. Oh, and cool. and we're going to be giving away the hundredth sketch with IG-11 and Baby, Baby Yoda. Yoda. So this is gonna be given away on Tuesday. Um, today and tomorrow are the final days to enter. So to be entered to win this, you have to either be a subscriber here on Twitch or a member of the Brian and Dr. Christie Patreon. So if you haven't joined one of those two mm -hmm. things or both of those things yet, join now or tomorrow or even Saturday. But after that, it'll Quick be like too cat. late to win this prize. So join soon and you'll be entered to win. Button. It's an enamel pen. It's not enamel. It's acrylic. Acrylic pen. That's it's right. super cool. That's right. It's They're actually awesome. really neat. I was impressed. Uh, yeah, they turned out really good. New Baby Yoda tomorrow. I know. I'm so I know, excited. We're so excited. So, guys, thanks for hanging out. This was fun. I know we haven't got to do it in a few weeks. Uh, let's run the credits because I know we did have some likes and some cheers. And then we'll come back and raid Joe Crony. So, get your cheers and emotes and everything's ready. We'll be right back, guys. <laughs> Pin not by fine. All right, that was some awesome credits. Here we go. We're gonna raid our good buddy Joe Crony in just a few seconds here. So again, thank you guys for everything. We really appreciate you. Uh, appreciate all your follows, all your likes, all your subscribes. Stay